brothers and sisters, thank you for joining me today. Um, this is truly just an absolutely glorious um, day, and I am eternally grateful for the opportunity that I have today to share um, what Father and Mother and Yeshua have given me, and um, all praise and glory be to them. So, um, today, if you were looking at the creation calendar that Father gave me, um, I guess it's been t over two years ago, um, we are at 11-11. And that's really interesting that of all days, this is the day that this has kind of come into fulfillment, um, into completion. Because 11-11, as um, the Lord had me share before, it stands for sending more laborers out into the vineyard. So that's really um, just amazing, and um, that and just the symbolism of the fact that this all came um, basically one eternal round today. Um, it's very beautiful. So um, this last year has been extremely, extremely difficult for me. I have been through one um, trial after another, and testing. It's it's literally been one testing after another. Um, and yesterday was probably by far the absolute hardest day that I've had in this past year. And um, then absolute breakthrough came um, last night and they had me up until almost 4 a.m. into almost the fourth watch um, instructing me and bringing all of this into alignment with creation. And so as hard as it was, um, I am truly eternally grateful for the beauty that comes from the ashes. And so, um, this has to do with, um, everything coming into alignment from what, um, I have been given over the last, um, since the dream in October of 21, um, so pretty much over almost the last three years. So, or let's see, two, two, one, two, two, three, two, yeah, it's so almost the last three years. And if um, many of you that have watched the videos before know that um, last, um, early last winter, or not this past winter, but the winter before, I was sick and um, I was really sick. And at one point, Father had instructed me in the middle of the night that I was supposed to go outside. And I did, and he had told me that um, what I was feeling was the imbalance in the earth. And at the time, I didn't know what that meant. Um, and so as this has progressed, um, I have been shown um, the, the beginning of the dream to the, uh, the, the end of the dream. Um, and I have been given, uh, my role was to bring creation back into balance. And I did not understand that. Um, I shared that when I redid a lot of the stuff that I had done. And the reason that Father said he couldn't steal the work was because my role was to bring back the female balance into everything. And there was still a ton of um, patriarchal dominance in it. And he was like, I can't steal that. That's not what I, that's not what I was asking. Um, but it did open up avenues for further insight. And so there was blessing that came from that, but it was all that growth and, and learning. So if you um, guys remember, if you've watched the other videos, so um, I have been given information uh, that on um, the imbalance of the dial, how it was only 24 elders, but where there are kings, there are always queens. So there's actually 48. Um, and so they took me through um, so the Lord had woken me up the second time that I had been shown the dial at night. The angels had woken me up to make sure they were like, are you understanding what you're being given? And, um, so from that point forward, then everything was able to come into balance because, um, everything was being aligned and it, and it all fell into place the way that, um, the way that it should have in the first place, but it all had to be a progression of learning. So I was given um, in that the scale, the menorah, the dial, um, creation calendar, the um, new moon feast, the Sabbath of light, um, 
let's see the let's see so the the Maseroth, the um, symbol of the royal priesthood and how we move into kingdom age the directions the seasons and this last one let's see oh the star alignments and then um the feast the seven feast and how we move from the law of moses into those higher laws and, and now what christ directly did and the symbolism in those feasts and then um the breastplate stone and what that looks like in the reflection of the water off of the firmament so those were all things that um I've been given throughout this. So this final piece is very absolutely just amazing and beautiful. And um, I have two things I have to get here to be able to show. So the imbalance of the earth and what is it? So um, as I have taught before that the imbalance of the earth is um, the male and female energy. Mother has been removed from creation from the kingdom. You cannot have a kingdom without a king and a queen. And so um, I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to show these two pictures really quick. And then I'm going to go into what I was given that will put this all into balance. And it's just, I just feel all this energy is bubbling up inside me. It's just truly amazing. Um, the glory of, of, um, of eternity of Holy Father and Mother's plan for their children and the purposes of why we're here and the purpose of why we're eternal beings and we pers and, and why we eternally progress. So I'm going to flip this over. Okay. So if you can see this, this is the scales and he gave me, um, father gave me this and was showing me, okay, so this is where the world has been in this patriarchal dominance. And so the scales have been tipped for thousands of years. Um, and you can see that the, the female, is is down here on the bottom and the male is way up here on the top okay that's really out of balance and then the world right now is trying to figure this out and so they were warning against not this false balance in proverbs 11 1 of you know the false balance of matriarch or patriarchal dominance and so we have to make sure that now we don't tip the scales the opposite direction right the goal is to align it with creation balance and that has to do with matthew 19 four through six of becoming one okay so now i'm going to go over to this one so this is the dial that i was given in the middle of the night and the second time that i was given it the angels woke me up to make sure that i had understood what was being given um and the dial represents um well the royal priesthood but it represents this is this is the throne of god where heavenly father and mother sit and christ sits at their right hand so you have 24 elders, and to put that into balance, there are 24 queens, which equals 48. And they had me go through in those videos all the equaling of, of 48. In everything that I just mentioned, um, it all comes out to that perfect um, 48. Even, um, let's see, well, in, in all of it. So if, if you want to know those things, you can go back to um, the videos on the calendar and... and um, the menorah and those things. So now I'm going to flip this back over. Okay. So then last night, like I said, I had the hardest day I've ever had in my life. I want to say that it was, it was pretty darn brutal, but I was so grateful for the breakthrough. So what is the dial? Okay. Um, the dial is also, or the throne room, what comes from the throne room of God? Healing. Healing comes from the throne room of God. And from father and mother, Yeshua and the Holy Spirit reside within that, that throne room. And that is where healing truly comes from. And so not only is it a dial that we should be tuned fully in to heaven, but it is also a healing will. Okay. So, um, right now, um, the world, like I said, has been in this patriarchal dominance for thousands of years. And God is like, no more. No more. That's not how they designed the kingdom. That's not how the kingdom should be ran. And so, um, no more of this patriarchal dominance. So that's what we're coming out of right now. So the scale balance has to return. And how does that happen? Um, so I'm going to show you um, this healing wheel and what they showed me. Um and also, I have in my notes here, 
what did Christ teach? Christ taught kingdom. So what is a kingdom? Ask yourself, what is a kingdom? What does a kingdom look like? Okay, in a kingdom, there is a father and a mother. There's always a kingdom of a father and a mother. So I'm going to turn this around and um, just show you this and then I will talk about it. Okay, so this is the healing wheel that um, they've been working on me with this for probably the last two months and now it all came into fulfillment. So this is where we've been in this patriarchal energy that has been out of balance for thousands of years. Patriarchal energy has to do with um, male and, or, sorry, physical and mental energy, okay? Where women have to do with spiritual and emotional. Okay, and this is matriarchal energy. So we know that Satan desires to stay in this because it is his goal to silence the woman, which is in Revelations 12. So the enemy wants to silence the woman. By so doing, he will keep the world out of balance. Okay, so we have, here's the, the table that sits around the throne room with the 24 elders and the 24 queens. And we have Heavenly Father and Mother, Yeshua, and the Holy Spirit reside in this throne room. Um, so what is Christ's role in our lives? His role is to pull us in to where he is. Okay? This is a magnetic pull. Um, so we're pulling the, the physical and the mental, the male energy, into the spiritual and emotional energy, which is female energy. So we're taking the spiritual, the women have been in the spiritual and emotional um, energy and men, that is the number one thing that um, has been shut off by this world is the emotional energy in men. So the spiritual and emotional live within the women and the physical and mental have been where the men have been, um, have been dominating from. So this magnetic pull is to pull these in together into balance of all spiritual, mental, spiritual, and, and emotional. Okay, that's the healing wheel. So this magnetic pull um, Christ pulls us to him to heal what's been broken out of balance. Christ is the only way back into the presence of father and mother. Okay, so um, this is what it looks like right now. So as we step into kingdom age, and this healing wheel will also rotate with everything else that he gave me, the directions, the season, um, all of it. It will literally flow in the same direction of turning on its axis. So when it turns on its axis, we will go from spiritual was here. Now we're going to go into, um, everything's going to rotate one to the right. And now spiritual, we will reside in the kingdom age. And all of these things will be in perfect balance. This is why there's, it kind of looks like a bullseye. That's our goal is to be in perfect balance um, of the male and female energy within um, kingdom unions. Okay, so I'm going to turn this back around. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So, um, so when the two, the male and female, are drawn together, they become one. A magnetic pole, balance returns, healing is complete, perfected love, and the world ascends. So we are going to go to Matthew 19. Um, Well, okay, let, let me, let me, actually, I should have done those opposite. Okay, so he had, the Lord had me do a video about a year and a half ago, and it was called, Have You Picked Up Your Cross and Followed Christ? If so, where have you followed him to? So this is again, have you picked up your cross and followed Christ? If so, where has it led you to? Because our goal is to be where Christ is. So is it getting you to where Christ is? That's a question that only you can answer for yourself. Okay, so we are going to go into Matthew 19, 4 through 6. And it says, And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which, was made, he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother... And cleave unto his wife, and they which are two shall become one flesh. There, wherefore, they shall no more twine but one flesh. 
Let not man therefore put asunder that which God hath um, coupled together. From the beginning, Christ himself is testifying from the beginning, father and mother. You are to leave father and mother. He is talking about in the throne, father and mother. From the beginning, there was a father and a mother. In a kingdom, there is a father and a mother. So Christ himself testifies that there is a mother. Um, who it became one with Heavenly Father. They are one. They are joined together as one. And that is so from the beginning. Um, okay, so... So now I'm going to go into the dream because this is phenomenal and amazing and um, absolutely beautiful. So when the Lord had taken me through the day of the events, at the, at the evening, it was Christ that presented me to Heavenly Father. It was Christ that presented me to God. And it was only at that moment that I was handed over to God that God was able to open up the firmament. Okay, and what was displayed as he opened the firmament was the worlds without numbers. Okay, they are kingdoms. These, this is the inheritance, the portion of the inheritance that is given to his sons. So the inheritance of his sons um, is a portion of his kingdom. And so if you look at the, the power and authority that God has, and when you talk about the priesthood, in scripture, it is passed from father to son. Why is that? Because every kingdom was passed from the very first kingdom where God passed it to his very first son. So it's passed father to son, father to son, father to son, every 7,000 years in the line of succession. And that is where the power of the priesthood comes from for men. It is from father, from each father, but it came originally from God from the very first world. Okay, which was displayed that night. Okay, so with every kingdom, there is a father, or there, there is a father and a mother, a king and a queen. Okay, so mothers come here with a priesthood already from mother, period. It's not passed down from, like, in the, in the kingdom of father, son, father, son, father, son. Mothers automatically come into the world with the power of the priesthood from heavenly mother. Um, okay, so now the next part of the dream is this, and this is truly amazing. So in the dream, Christ handed me over to Father, but after he opened up the firmament and displayed the world without numbers, there was a woman that just she was just there. She just all of a sudden was standing by me. And she said to him, is this the genealogy of our ancestry? And he directly spoke to her and he said, this is your, this is your eternal heritage of who you are. He was showing her the heavens. Brothers and sisters, the person who was standing next to me was Heavenly Mother, and he was directly speaking to his queen in front of me, explaining this is her heritage of their children. What he has is also hers. And for the longest time, I'm like, where did this lady, where, where did she come from? Why was she there? I don't understand. He was literally instructing me through her. This is what father and mother have created with their children. And this is the portion that they give to the sons of God as the inheritance and the daughters as the kingdom advances every 7,000 years and a new world, a new heaven and earth is created. So that's just truly, truly um, beautiful and amazing. So, um, so then he said, this is your eternal heritage of who you are. Um, so then... At the end of the dream, the very last thing after he had that conversation uh, was the tree of life. So we know that in the Garden of Eden there were two trees. And one tree was the tree of good and evil. And if you chose to partake of it, um, 
then you you are no longer under the protection of God, like or not under the protection, but you have chosen to um, step forward and 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 learn and progress and grow and understand the good over the evil. But the only one that can take you through that process is literally Jesus Christ. He has to walk you through that process. We know that the second tree in the midst of the garden is the tree of life. But they weren't allowed to partake in that tree um, either. Like it didn't say, like they were told not to partake of the fruit of good and evil. And they did. They partook of that fruit, which in return set them on a course of learning um, in a fallen in a fallen state. Um, so I'm being impressed that I'm supposed to share the, the book of father and mother knew that we could that absolutely believed in us to know that we could come here and accomplish this we did not come here to prove ourselves to them we came to prove to ourselves we could do it they already know we can do it that's why we're here okay so um so when we partake of the tree of good and evil christ begin he becomes our master teacher and he walks us through how to overcome this world and how to become a doer of the word and and um takes us through really the difference of what the world has taught us good and evil is and what good and evil actually is through from the kingdom eternal perspective of things. So um, when when Christ takes us through that process, um, the ultimate goal is to get to the tree of life where we become doers of the word, which that's in James. We're supposed to become doers of the word. And at that point, it's the tree of life. We serve a living God and a living Christ. His words are to become living within us. This cannot happen without personal relationship with Jesus Christ. In Jeremiah, he teaches, you, you are to hear the Lord's voice for yourself. And if, if they don't, that's why the people, that's why, um, the, that's why the people are cursed is because they don't get into that personal relationship with the Lord and they don't hear his, his voice for themselves in their own life. Um, Let's see. Sorry, I have a bunch of notes here. Um, so again, if you have picked up your cross, um, and if, if you have picked up your cross, where does it where does it take you? Is it taking you to where he is, or or is it taking you somewhere else? Because if it, it's taken you to where he is, then he opens, then he turns over to Father, and Father reveals that him and Mother are one. Okay, there is a father and a mother in a kingdom. So again, my role was to bring everything back into creation balance, which to bring back the truth of the kingdom, to bring back the family unit. And there cannot be children without a mother. There cannot be. Okay, that is that is a false belief of the world. Okay, so the tree of life. So in closing with this, um, the very last book in the Bible is Revelation chapter 22. So verse 14 says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may inherit, sorry, en, sorry, and may enter through the gate into the city. That's where the dial is, guys. That's the throne room of God. Verse 17 the spirit and the bride say come and let him that heareth say come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely brothers and sisters this is the end of the book this is the end but it's only the beginning and it is glorious and it is amazing and all glory and praise and honor be to god um this is their kingdom. We are their children. They love us and and they they want us to remember them, both of them, because we have two perfect parents who love us in perfected love, just like Christ. He learned that perfected love and he said, "Be perfect even as me and my father are perfect." It was perfected in love. This world will ascend when it is perfected in the love. Once this balance returns, um 
of the, the male and female energy back in the balance of what it was created from the beginning before the world got a hold of it and took the woman out of it because that's been Satan's plan all along. And so my role was to literally bring the woman back into creation, bring mother back into creation. Brothers and sisters, this is the end of the book of Revelation. The invitation to all of us is come and see. Come and see for yourself. Come and understand for yourself. Come and partake and, and see eternally all that God has to offer his children. I'm sorry, father and mother have to offer their children. It is glorious and we have such a profound purpose for being here upon this earth, especially at this time. This is a glorious time of healing in the earth and, and the Lord is healing as fast as people will step into it. This is the year of the Lord. Um, like I said, this has been the hardest year, but the absolute most growth I've ever had and I am eternally grateful for that. I am grateful for the opportunity to now have a testimony because of all the testing and the learning and um, that I have been walked through because I can speak and testify and and can testify that I have seen and I do know because I have personally been walked through this. It was not something that was handed to me by the world. It came with a ton of diligence and perseverance and tears and dedication and crying out to God, why? Why was I chosen for this? But I am eternally grateful. And if this has helped one person see the kingdom, that now the female and male energy can work together in the matri patriarch and matriarchal balance of what it was intended to be from the very beginning. And this world can be ridded from the patriarchal dominance that was never of God. That was never how they created their kingdom. Then this was truly worth it. And all glory and praise be to God. Have a glorious day.